kitchen now. There's my uh, breaking out the fancy equipment. I don't use this uh, very often, but this is a uh, my Wolfgang Puck uh, cutting board and serving tray because it's got the handle there, you can see. Um, I believe it says Wolfgang Puck on it somewhere. Let me see if I can find it. Yep, there's a signature right there on the handle. Let's see if I can zoom in. Wolfgang Puck, he's a very famous uh, chef. He does a lot of uh, QVC and home shopping network shows like that. Um, but yeah, this is basically like a, it's a cutting board. It's a, it's a pizza peel. You know, you can get your pizzas out of the oven like that. And uh, But today I'm going to use it for cutting this sharp cheddar cheese by Telemook. Now... What we're going to do is I'm just going to let that cheese set there for 30 minutes because, um, yeah, this is, a, this is this again, my own personal opinion and experience, but certain things, and cheese is one of them, to where if you take it out of the fridge and let it set, you know, outside room temperature for 30 minutes, just for me personally, I just feel... I just taste, I just taste more. It's so, it's almost like the flavors come out when, when the, ch when the chill, when some of that chill is uh, taken off, yeah, I just get more flavor from it. I get, I get a stronger flavor. So that's the reason I do that, you know? I mean, yeah, sure. It's fine to eat it straight out of the fridge when it's, uh, you know, still very cold, but just personal experience, um, uh, yeah, it, it tastes better and just more flavor when I when I leave it set out. So I'm gonna leave that set out for 30 minutes before I open it and start cutting on it, cutting the cheese here. For uh, well, I'll cut it in little little squares because uh, to fit on the crackers. So I'll be back in 30 minutes. Okay, so we're back in the kitchen here. We're ready to cut this cheese been about 30 minutes so let's get into it when you're, whenever you're uh, handling a sharp knife you always want to uh, just don't be in a rush you know um, just take your time be safe also make sure your uh, knives are your sharp knives are sharp okay um, I'll probably do a video coming up of uh, knife sharpening because they um, they say that um, you know more times than not you're going to cut yourself on a dull knife than a sharp one because when you ha when your knife is dull you know you have to use like more force than you normally would if it was sharp okay so therefore it can if you're using more force or, ha or have to hold it at a different angle then you slip and then that's when accidents happen so safety first. That's number one priority. So yeah, this is a sharp cheddar cheese. It's uh, it's you know, again, you guys know I like flavor, so yeah, that's that's why I get the sharp cheddar. So I'm gonna cut this. Hope you guys can see this. I'm just gonna just cut it in like little chunks, like so. So there's, that's about how that's about how thick it is, and then I'm going to cut each one of those into us in half. So therefore, it's like a little cube. <laughs> See that? So it'll fit perfectly on my uh, chicken and a biscuit crackers. I think I'll just do three slices here, and then that'll, that'll give me and that'll give me six uh, six little squares. Yeah, whenever you buy blocks of cheese like that, you know you um, you need to have some like Ziploc baggies to um, to put it in, because you know 
if you just like fold you can like fold like that but still some it's like see I, I try to fold it like that right but the, there's like a gap there see there air is still going to get in that gap and just like water and wood is no good same thing with air and well cheese and really a lot of foods um, when air gets to it um, it kind of will become hard and crusty and nasty and basically where you can't even eat it okay so so let's get my crackers here these are the, again these are the chicken and a biscuit and I apologize for the vo the poor video quality on my uh, grocery haul video I was using my cell phone you know not not, not my uh, actual video camera that I, I do mo all my videos on yeah I, I just thought it would be weird taking the video camera and the store that would be very noticeable so so yeah here's my chicken and biscuit crackers and if you guys if you guys haven't seen these crackers here's what they look like so see it's kind of like I just liked how they're the how the they're cut they're kind of cut fancy you know so you see how that um, so my little squares that I caught that I cut it's like almost perfect almost the perfect size for it right so yeah so there's my little my little cheese chunks and all so I can eat, eat I need myself to need some six crackers on there there's two four some of them are you know broken in here so I just I want the full full size ones aren't broken so there we go six so how's that look see if I can move it there if we can zoom in on it so now we just need the wine and a glass and we'll uh, I'll be back once I get the wine bottle out <laughs> what is up guys we're in the kitchen here I got my cheese and crackers ready to go now I just got to do, do the honors here of the wine. This is what I'm drinking today. I don't know if you guys can. This is uh, Arbor Arbor Mist Peach Moscato. Um, in case you don't know, Moscato is a sweet wine, and that's that's what I like. I like sweet wines. To me, dry wines just but it's not my thing, right? They to me they just don't taste good. Um, and so yeah, I've tried dry wines, and I just because you know some people have said, oh, if you keep drinking it, you know you'll you develop a taste for it. But to me, that's almost like trying to like force yourself to. It's like you're trying to talk yourself into it. You know, it's like uh, you're trying to like you know drink it and be like it's not that bad is it and then it's like you're trying to convince yourself and it's like I don't want to like have to do that a hundred times before I you know play a mind trick on myself and be like oh yeah I guess that is pretty good it's like no it's it's either good or it ain't you know right off the bat I don't have to convince you know none of that nonsense so anyways um yeah sweet wines I I like sweet wines it's it's got to taste good for me so I like Moscatos, all kinds of Moscatos. Um, that's my favorite wine. Uh, every now and then I'll do like a Riesling or something, you know. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna, I'm gonna pour me a glass here. And then I'm gonna taste it out. Let's see, get this out here for the camera so you guys can see me pour it better.
So we're back in the living room here. I thought I would do a cozy little uh, fireplace scene with a, for the wine tasting. I thought I'd spiff you up a little bit. I'm not, I don't dress up much, but you know, this is a very different uh, video for me. So I thought I would, uh, you know, uh, recognize the, uh, the situation and for, uh, for what it is. But I got my wine here, peach Moscato. Let's taste it out. It is good. Um, it's it's uh, sweet, but it's not like overly sweet. There's there's a little bit of I'm gonna say a little bit of tartness to it. So let's I got my cheese and crackers. Let's take let's taste this. This is the Tillamook sharp cheddar cheese. Should be a good combo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, I like sweet wines because I don't like the taste of alcohol. That's the thing with uh, I'm not a big time drinker anyway. Um, yeah, I don't even like beer really. I mean, like regular beer. There's been a few craft beers that. Uh, that I've tried that weren't too bad, you know. But overall, I'm not a beer drinker. I'm not really a big time drinker, period, you know. So, uh, so if I do, it's a, it's an occasional glass of wine or like a wine cooler. You know, usually something fruity like wine coolers. Like I used to get like the Seagram's Blackberry and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, um, something fruity, right? Um, so yeah. But yeah, this is uh, it's sweet, but it's not too sweet. It's got a little bit of tartness, a little bit of a little bit of bite to it. Let's, let's give it a smell. Yeah. Uh, by no means am I am I an expert on wine. I just try things, and if I like it, I like it, and I uh, try to give my honest opinion on it, and uh, you know, to, to describe it as best I can uh, to maybe. That way, you give you guys the information to see if you guys if you think you would like it. So let's. Hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Definitely helps with that, with that, that that cheese and crackers. Definitely, um, definitely add to it, add to the experience. I would say I'm gonna pour me a little more. Well, I got a little bit more. Let's finish it off. Pour me a little, another round. <laughs> There's not much color to it. It's kind of like just a little bit of yellow tint. Just a very, very little bit. I mean, I'm not big on color of drinks. It's, it's That's kind of irrelevant. I know some people do care about it, uh, what color the drinks are. But to me, it's all about the taste. Yeah, that, that is good. I would recommend it, especially if you're not a wine person. And because see, some people they 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 hear about wine and they're like, oh, they probably they're like, oh no, I don't, they don't like wine. And uh, you know, there I'm gonna be honest. There's very few that I like. Okay, like I said, there's a lot of wines out there, a lot of different kinds, a lot of different companies, but. Yeah, I would say there's more out there that I don't like than I do, because if you just take the the sweet wines, you know, and set them aside, 
that's kind of like a small fraction of like of, of all the wines that you know that are out there that exist so I just looked it up on my uh, my phone here um, you know, popular wines that I really don't care for and they're they're not sweet you know like Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot Chardonnay Pinot Noir Pinot Grigio uh, Sauvignon Blanc yeah th those are those are like popular wines but they're not sweet they're just not for me so uh, wines that are sweet that I would recommend you try that these are just ones I like you know any kind of Moscato right this is what I got is peach there's different there's pink Moscato there's just regular Moscato there's um I believe I got one yes I do I did buy one recently I'm gonna maybe do a taste uh, another video on that one and that's a strawberry mango Moscato I'm really actually looking forward to that to that one I might even like it better than this peach which this peach is good but, but yeah I, I would recommend so I, I looked up um, let's see I'm gonna do a search here in real time on my phone popular sweet wines yeah so yeah Moscato Riesling uh, it does say port, uh, Zinfandel, and I know Re I'm going to say Riesling is kind of a semi-sweet. It's not really, you know, it's got a little bit of sweetness, but you know, it's not. Moscato is probably the sweetest wine there is. I would say it's it's got a high um, a high sweetness profile. But yeah, this this is some good stuff. I would recommend it. And it's not that expensive. Here's the thing, the other thing too, right? People have this misconception that, uh, you know, wine is expensive or you have to spend a lot of money to get a good wine. That's just simply not true. I got I got this bottle here of the Arbor Mist Peach Moscato for like, I think it was like around $5. But yeah, you can get a, a good bottle of, of wine for less than $10, you know depending on the size of the bottle you get but yeah I've I've tried expensive wines that I didn't like and cheaper wines like this that I do so there's a very there's a risk misconception out there about wines you know uh, that they're an expensive drink they're high-end and you know, that you know definitely that exists if you you know if you if you want to spend the money you know go for it but but again you don't have to it's not it's not a, uh, necessary so, my recommendation for, for tasting out wine and the cheese is I would let that cheese, you know, take it out of the fridge and let it set out a good half hour. Even 45 minutes would be okay. And I would say once the, um, oh, let's just make it simple here, right? Um, I would say... Set the cheese out for 45 minutes, okay? But after 30 minutes, get your wine out of the fridge. And let it let your wine, you know, sit out for about 15 minutes. Um, because I've noticed that when, every, when anything is chilled and right out of the fridge, you don't really get to experience the full, the full flavor profile, all right? So once it's out of the fridge just a little bit and it, that, that chill comes off, just from my personal experience, you, you get more flavor. So yeah, let your wine sit, let the cheese sit out for 45 minutes, let the wine sit out for 15. And I don't know, tell me what you think. So anyways, I'm going to uh, wrap this up. Just didn't want to make, just wanted to do a quick video. So I want to give you guys a toast. Cheers. Here's to your health. Stay safe out there. And until next time, keep it retro.